Hello, welcome to 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. Ever wonder where the ideas for movies come from? What are the creative forces that have produced, uh, I think the number is 2,577 films around the world, about 600 of them Hollywood features? Today's episode of 30 Minutes here at Radnor Studio 21 is about an independent film conceived by a young man named Mitchell Bass, funded by his parents, Marcia and Steve Bass, directed by a Delaware County producer-director with strong ties to Hollywood, and starring another Del Delaware County resident. So it's a local production, but on a much larger stage. It all started because Mitchell had an idea, a concept for a film about good and evil. Mitchell's neighbor happens to be Joshua Coates, the producer-director, uh, who encouraged Mitchell to put his ideas down on paper. And that was the beginning of a journey that has produced a 90-minute uh, part sci-fi, part mystery thriller titled Hollywood. During the first half of today's show, we're going to be visiting with Mitchell and Marsha Bass, and then we'll talk to uh, the producer-director, Joshua Coates, and the star, uh, whose name is Pete Postiglione. I think I got it right. And as soon as I heard it, I, thought, I said to somebody, he belonged in The Godfather. <laughs> Mitchell, <laughs> pleasure you, to have you here. Marcia, I can't reach. Uh, <laughs> nice okay. to be here. I, I guess this whole thing started because uh, Marcia talked to a friend of mine who has been on the show on 30 Minutes, and it was suggested that I contact you to get the story that, that all happened last week or this right. week. I Absolutely. Think. And here we are. But I'm delighted we were able to put it together in such order because you have a showing of the film, which we'll get into in a great deal more detail, uh, just coming up in mid-October, is that right? That's correct. Uh, can I mention Please? October yeah. 16th at 7 p.m. at the Bryn Mawr Film Festival in yeah. Bryn Mawr on Lancaster Avenue. Institute. You're correcting your mother? Yes. Oh. It's not the festival, it's the institute, isn't it? What a, what a, okay. Lancaster Something. Avenue in Bryn Mawr. Right. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> but so how does it feel to have an idea that you conjured up in your ima imagination now on the big screen or about to be? Uh, it feels great. Um, I've been trying to do something like this since I was in middle school, right around here actually, right mm -hmm. in middle school. I've been working hard, coming up with ideas, and really, with all my ideas that I would come up with, I really had nothing that I could do with them. I have a lot of ideas like that. <laughs> exactly. And I, I, I became uh, like 47 years old, still nothing, and then I got fortunate because Joshua Coase, the director, moved somewhere close by to me, mm -hmm. really close by, and we met, and he said, he's a director, and I said, I'm a writer, and he said, what do you have? I said, I have ideas. I don't really write them, I just have them. And she, he said, write something down. Maybe I could do something with it. And then about a year goes by, and he says, what do you have? I said, nothing, I don't, I don't write. <laughs> and she said, this is your big opportunity. I can really help you here. This is what you've been working for. So eventually this went on for like two years, and he said, okay, what's your best idea? And I told him Hollywood was the idea I had. The title of the film. The title of the film, and then we kind of just, then he told me to write it. He said, that's great, you should write it, and I wrote nothing. And about six months later, he just said, you know what, I'll write the script. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. It's spelled H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-U-L-D. Yes. O-U-L-D. So uh, it's a story about... What's the story like? The story is about... Uh, there's a guy named Mark Travis, and he is a famous, rich writer, and he's won awards, and he eventually runs out of ideas, and he gets writer's block, but his agent is pushing him, and his agent says, I can help you, but you gotta, it turns out what, the help that arrives to him is very negative in a way, and I won't mm -hmm. go much further than that. It's a, it's a, and he went, he went to his hometown to find inspiration. That was the idea of it. All right. So he goes to his hometown to find inspiration, and he eventually finds something that he wasn't expecting to find, which is Holly. And what Holly would do is like nothing he'd ever expected. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the idea. This is not a film for children, apparently. It is not a film no, for children. Right. <laughs> is it rated? I don't or know. Will it be? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Is, did you intend it to be uh, to have a moral, uh, to, to truly be a, a good and evil? It, it, you know, 
When I came up with the idea originally, yes. it was based on a book that I wrote when I was 16. I wrote like this long book, 300 pages, nothing became of it, but the essence of the idea was in there, which, I mean, the idea was a guy, and he wants to become a writer, and he runs out of ideas, and so that was, I mean, that was in the novel but I wrote. That sounds like you. It's exactly like <laughs> me. It's almost based on a true story. It's about, yeah. Um, and I have done some very nefarious things to come up with ideas. Right. I really have. And that's kind of where this idea comes from. All right. The search for inspiration at the cost of what? That's the question. What's the cost? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so Travis comes home and is seduced by circumstance, by an individual, into a life that was new and somewhat disturbing to him. Um, pretty much. Um, he was seduced by... More, by, by getting more than he already has. Yeah. He was perfectly yeah. well off. It's greed. What's that? Greed. Greed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, old-fashioned greed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the greed manifests itself in a girl named Holly. Yeah. Is what it comes down to. It's a familiar story. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Marcia, what was your reaction when Mitchell said, Mom, uh, I would like to do this film, but I need some money? Uh, your reaction and Steve's. Well, it's more Steve's reaction, which was kind of negative. Um, <laughs> kind of negative? <laughs> it was pretty negative. He didn't know who Josh was. Yeah, he had never even Josh, met Josh. Josh came to me and said, we could do this if you can find yeah. some money. And I said, Mom, Dad, give me some money for a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. said, who's Josh? And no. <laughs> <laughs> so we met Josh. We actually met him at a diner. And he told us what he had done, his ideas, yeah. the fact that he really wanted to do this movie with Mitchell but he needed the, the money, and originally my husband said, no, we're not gonna do it, and then we talked and talked, and I kind of pushed it a little bit, and he finally said, okay, this will be Mitchell's chance mm -hmm. to prove what he can do, and we financed it, and... Has he recovered? <laughs> my dad? No, <laughs> Why do you think he's not here? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's fine. I mean, it really, the movie turned out better than we ever yeah. thought it would be, um, and... I, it opened um, at the Ridgewood Film Festival, where it got it was sold out. It got That's wonderful great. reviews, and it it's just so exciting for us. It really is. It's amazing. It's it's something we, something that I was hoping for, but didn't ever expect to be yeah. able to achieve. I, I'm sure it's been the yeah. highlight of your life. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, not many parents have the bragging rights to say my my son did a movie right. and my husband and I co-produced it, or right. funded it. Uh, has that new status changed your life in any way? Um, are you and your husband still talking? No, we are, and actually he's retired. I work full-time at Ludington Library in mm -hmm. Bryn Mawr, and so that's kept me kind of grounded, I think, the fact that I go to work every day. But yeah. it's it's it, it's just been so exciting for us, and yeah, um, we are... A little experience. Yeah, 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 I mean, even being at the filming, we were there for sure. the whole filming and seeing how that happens. Uh, now, this is an independent film, right. and, and I've had some experience with those in the past, but in my experience, which goes back about 100 years, uh, I was involved in a lot of corporate video filming and right. so on, and it is such a tedious, monotonous, mind-numbing experience, uh, waiting around and the, tr trying to get a shot, and a shot doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera. Did you go through all of that? Were you on the, the set? When okay, let me just say that I have been you know, in some other little things involved um, where you're doing a commercial for something and you sit and they, you spend yes. an hour and a half yes. getting one shot. Yes. This actually didn't work like that. Really? I was so, and I think everybody in the cast would say that. It went so smoothly. There were not many takes that were done well, over. We, and it, we had the budget for 11 days. Yeah, we, we <laughs> so had a we very had limited budget. <laughs> so it had to be, you know. Uh -huh. But everybody cooperated. Everything just went so smoothly. We were very lucky. And most of the shooting or all the shooting was done in this area? The shooting was done around this area. Some of it in the main line, some of it in Delco, uh, Newtown Square, uh, the Primos Clifton Heights area. And it was almost like a family because yeah. there were people we knew, areas that we well, knew. I, we did part of it in the the pizzeria down the street from me that I've been to a thousand times and part of it in the bar that I've been to. <laughs> so it was kind of exciting like that. I got to walk in as a... <laughs> did, did you uh, use locals as extras? Absolutely. Uh, That's, uh, it was very low budget. Yeah. <laughs> just well, it's not for that, just involving people in the community. Well, well, did you get somebody from California? Yeah. The star, the Holly character is from oh, California. Uh-huh. But um, it, it was just, 
Yeah, I mean, everybody just was so proud of the whole thing, and they all yeah. came. They all came from this area to yeah. Ridgewood for the premiere when we had that, yeah. and it just. And Josh, I have to I can't say enough about him. He just made the whole thing work. Mm -hmm. Well, that's his job. Yeah. Well, I but, uh, so he gets paid for it. <laughs> Were there many script changes? Now, you didn't write the script, Josh. Wrote right, the I, wrote, script. I wrote. I wrote but, but the poem in it, yeah. which kind of guided the script. Okay, so, so that hear. inspired it and provided the framework. Right, for exactly, the script. exactly. Were there many script changes, or did did you experience with so many independent films too? You have a script, right? But you permit the actors uh, to improvise once they get into character. I think Josh will Josh, probably be able to yeah. answer that. But I will say that what's interesting is that. I don't think there was a lot of room for impro improvisation, maybe, or a lot of time yeah. for that. Maybe there was. But once we had the whole thing made, and we had the whole, and we, we watched it, we realized that part of it should be in different places. So we started rearranging the, the, uh, the parts of the movie. Right. So that's what took a lot of time, actually. So like the beginning was the middle, and the middle became the so end. You're saying reshooting or re not reshooting? No, 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 just in the editing. 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 Because uh, fortunately, I live. So the assembling all of. The yeah, things. exactly. Yeah. And I live close enough to Josh. And he's got all the equipment in his place. Where we, I go over there, and together we would try to figure out how this would work best. Right. And we just rearranged it until it looked as good as it could. Uh, who had final say on the finished product when it was in the can? Who said that's it? This is our film. She did. Producer. No. Oh, the money. The no, money. no, the money. no. Absolutely. No, really, Josh did. I mean, if there was an idea that we didn't agree on, we would talk it over and come to, you yeah. know. Yeah, we all, actually, yeah. we all worked together. My mom was in, yeah. in that process of rearranging I the I mean, there was stuff. never a time yeah. when there was, I mean, any conflict. I hate yeah. to say yeah, that. It sounds, not, you know. Not. I mean, we had different different ideas sometimes, but it was never a confrontational situation. It was always open. We were open to each other's ideas, yeah. which makes an incredible working environment. It doesn't sound like much fun. There's got to be conflict. I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, we're just, we're disappointing you. you. Sorry. This is much more interesting. <laughs> we're sorry. Uh, do you have aspirations of becoming the next M. Night Shyamalan? Um, have you met him? I have not. I would love to meet him. I know he's in this area. Uh, and he does do kind of stuff that I do in terms of ideas and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know where I want to go from here. I'd like to continue with the writing and the producing and maybe the acting at some point. I'd be interested in that. But uh, I am, is that night? I guess he's around here somewhere. Oh, maybe he lives in Newtown Square. Maybe, maybe, maybe he'll yeah. hear this. And come, yeah. and, uh, oh, you know, bite you over. I, that would be very nice. If he sees a movie, come out. Yeah. Come, come out, I'm sure. <laughs> but at this point, don't you, don't, you don't have a sequel or another. We do have it. We, we have, have we a have a potential Hollywood too, actually. Oh, Potentially, really? we're working on ideas for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the same storyline, the same characters. Same or? character. Well, it, it, we ha that's we're not sure exactly, but we have some definite ideas. I mean, it would be Holly. Holly would be in it for sure. Right. And hopefully, Mark, Travis, Pete, the yeah. main characters. Absolutely. I know there's a word for that. It's, it's, it's not continuity, but where you take the same characters or many of the same, well, the, or the principal characters, right. and take him or her through another journey. Well, right. it would be either that or we're thinking about making a TV series uh -huh. in which every week uh, Hollywood mess with a different kind of person. Kind ah, of thing. okay. And you'll, you'll understand that more once you see the movie. Yeah. But um, it'd be interesting. Okay. Um, the devil and somebody else's children. Do you expect the film to make a profit? I, I certainly. Stephen does. does. Your husband. Stephen does. does. Yeah. Um, you know what? Even if it doesn't, I have to say, yeah. this was really it's, it's the highlight. Once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime we would never sure. have done something yeah, like I, this, and it's you know. But we're hoping. Yeah. Um, and you can talk to Josh about that yeah, more. Yeah, I, I think for me, what would be nice is if this movie was something I could bring to other people and say, look, look what I've done. Maybe I could work with you, kind of yeah. thing. As a, as a jumping point. Who do you envision as the audience, the primary audience for your film? Because if there are lessons to be learned from what they see in, in this story, who did you have in mind when you conceived of the idea and maybe said to yourself, if, if they see this, it might be helpful in some way? I would or, say, or is that a yeah. reach? No, no, it's not a reach at all. Um, I would say that this movie could help people, not help people, but can make people think in different ways, people who feel like they need to have more in life when yeah. they really should be content with what they have. Yeah. I mean, that's not, it's not very obvious from the film, but even the title, Hollywood, yeah. you think of Hollywood, the real Hollywood, yes. and it's all about people who will do anything to get yeah. ahead. And that's kind of what the story's about. This guy who's okay. trying to get ahead, mm -hmm. and he does something that he probably shouldn't be doing.
I know we can't talk about the surprise ending, so I won't ask. <laughs> right. That's why I wish you the oh, very best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marcia. It was thank delightful. You for, thank you so much. Paul and, and arranging all of this. We'll now switch to Joshua Coates, the uh, uh, producer, director, and writer. Right. And the star of the film, who plays Travis, is that right? Mark Travis. Travis. Yeah. Right. And that's Pete Postilio. Close, Pete? Close, okay. Postilio. <laughs> thank you. Best.